Okay, let's make this digital dissolve effect using Blender and Geometry Nodes. You can see it's a, a cool way to transition objects into your scene, uh, maybe make them uh, digitally transform into existence. So we have this here and uh, I'm going to show you everything from the materials, lighting, the node setup and everything. You can apply this on quite a, a lot of different objects. For example, I have a, an, another example here where I have these other objects and uh, maybe your you're making a movie about uh, games and uh, yeah, this is this would be an, a nice transition effect to bring things into existence and uh, you can even apply them to a different object. So for example, this house here, I can just uh, bring that in here, copy, modifiers, and so you can see what we get. Uh, you have the option to add more subdivisions so that the pixels are even smaller and I uh, can see, yeah, the details just like that. Yeah, so the project files are going to be on my Gumroad page, Patreon, and on my YouTube memberships. All links are going to be in the description. So let's jump in and get started. Okay, so I have the glasses right here. No modifier, nothing. So let's go to geometry nodes and uh, set up the modifiers. Uh, geometry nodes, new. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, let's look at the wireframe. You can see how the wireframe looks. Let me turn off optimized here. Uh, I think these are too many subdivisions. We can add the subdivisions inside the geometry nodes. So let's do that first. We'll do a subdivision surface. Uh, this will also change the shape of the mesh, uh, but if you don't want to change the underlying, the structure of the mesh, you can just use the subdivision mesh option. It will also subdivide the mesh, but it won't smoothen the geometry. So you can still see the facets. So depending on what you're working on. So for example, if we added a house, you wouldn't want to use a subdivision surface on this because it will change the shape of the of the house. For that, you might want to use a, subdiv a subdivide mesh uh, that will just subdivide the mesh without changing the shape of the house. Or what you could do, if you want to support both of the, the different types of subdivisions, you can just use a switch node. So add a subdivide mesh and use a switch node. So we can either switch we can switch between the different geometries if we want. So, and uh, we can output the level. So we can control the level here. But if we want to switch to the other type of subdivision, we can have a switch. So yeah, we still get the subdivision, but we can determine whether we want uh, the smoothing or to retain the original shape of the mesh. Now that we have subdivided, uh, I think we want less subdivision. So let's go with something simple like that. Uh, we can split these faces because we want each face to be turned into a pixel. So you can see each face is turned into a pixel. So we can do, we can use a split edges and that will do exactly that. If I add a scale element, you can see now each face is now separate from the other mesh. To make these look more pixelated or to have more depth, we're going to extrude them. Extrude mesh, kind of individual, just extrude mesh. Uh, if you go to your overlays and check the orientation, you'll see that uh, uh, the mesh is not fully closed. So let's join the, this mesh with the extruded mesh. And I think if we look at the orientation again, we want to make sure that this is flipped, flip faces. I think, yeah, this, so that is, uh, the mesh is fully closed. Our pixels are fully closed. We turn off the orientation. We need to merge by distance. Okay, so this is what we have. Now we want to turn this into a transition, these pixels into a transition. So we want to be able to control which parts are pixelated and which parts are not. For that, we can use an object. Let's bring in an empty, something like this. And uh, we want this to control our gradient. So I can bring that in empty and uh, I can use it to sample uh, the distance of each pixel from this position. So I'm going to use relative and I use the vector math to get the location, to get the distance of this. So I will use distance and distance and uh, the distance of each pixel by using the position, the position of each face and uh, calculate the distance from this. And that should give us our gradient, a nice gradient. So let me pin this and review this. So you can see we get that. You can use a map range to control this. And then we can use our, our ramp, our ramp to grow this and uh, you can adjust this according to what you want. You can make the transition more sharp. Yeah. But uh, the issue with this is that uh, you don't get any rotation. So if I wanted this to be rotated, we don't get any rotation. 
So what instead I could do is use a gradient and we can get the position. If you connect this to the vector, it won't change anything. But uh, the advantage to that is that we can use now a math node, a vector math with the operation add to add this location to this. And now when we move this, uh, should it be subtract? Yeah, when we move this, the gradient moves and when we want to rotate, we can use our vector rotate and uh, we can use the Euler option and uh, use this rotation. So now when we rotate this, you can see we get the rotation, but it's inverted. So click the invert to have it inverted to how we want. So now I can rotate this easily using this. I can move it around. Uh, so yeah, now we have a way to control our gradient transition. Now we don't need this part anymore. We can add more parameters like the map range. I can expose, let's see if I want this to be, yeah, you can expose this parameter to control the gradient. So I can use that, I can expose that here. Now let's turn this into to a transition. So I can, let me first remove this preview. Yeah, one thing we can do is use this, this results for the scale. So we have this scale elements uh, that changes the scale of our pixels. So if I bring that in here, you can see we basically are able to get half of the transition we want. And I remember we have this, this from max. So it changes how spread the gradient is, but yeah, again, we can rotate it. But one thing you will notice is that uh, the final mesh is still split uh, as a result of this split meshes. So we want to separate the split faces and the original mesh so that we can have the final mesh that looks clean, but retain the transition phase as pixelated. So what I'm going to do is I uh, just come in here and delete the rest of the mesh, except uh, this part, except the transition part. And uh, to do that, it's very easy. We can just use uh, this uh, selection mask we already have. Uh, we can use a uh, delete mesh. And uh, for the selection, we can use the same gradient we are using. I think it's this. Yeah, something like that. Let's say delete faces. And uh, we need to use a compare so that we choose what we want to delete. Yeah, so everything up until, yeah, let's say up to until there. Yeah, something like that. So now when we unmet this, we get, we get our nice transition. We want now to bring back the original mesh. So for that, this is uh, before the split, this is our original mesh. So we can also do the same, this here, and use the same selection, but uh, let's see. I think it should be less than, yeah, around there. Now, if we join these two, you can see we have a nice transition into the final mesh. Yeah, yeah, I think that looks good. One other thing we could do is add some distortion on the mesh here, on these pixels, so that they are not too uniform. So around before the extrude, yeah, before before the extrude, or between the split meshes, after we split, we can, let me push these back a bit so we get some room. We can get a set position, just do it here, and use, add some noise to the normal. So you get a normal push it into the offset. Yeah, you can see because we have split faces, they're all being pushed around like that. Uh, if the we, if we did have a split face, we would get something like this. Uh, but uh, let's use a noise texture to add some variation. So vector math and scale uh, by this. I think I need to subtract a 0.5. Yeah, to get, yeah, to remove the offset from the noise. So something like that. So we have that, uh, we need to add it to the scale elements here. Use that instead, you get that. But uh, we want this noise to be only applied in the transition area. So I'm going to add another scale value here and use this map range we have. Now you can see what we get. And actually this should be flipped around. 
if I can use a ramp flip. Yeah, so this displacement should be just in the transition area. I can even use a math node to offset that a bit. Just like that. So we split that. You can see now these are a bit pushed out. I can even, if you want, you can even add another scale value here to push them out even further. And so we extrude, merge, and we have that. We get that nice transition and uh, the stronger your scale, so it can make this, turn this into a wild, a very, a very wild, wild transition like that. But uh, uh, if you push this weight out, you'll see these points, but uh, in the final render, they won't render. They just uh, appear in the viewport, but they don't render. So let's set up some lighting. Now you can animate this how you want. Okay, for the lighting, go to cycles, push this back a bit, and uh, let's set up some lighting. Add an, a nice area light here. Just make it big so that we have a nice, we capture some nice reflections on through the glass. Now for the background, I just had uh, something like uh, a circle, extruded that can go to the materials. This would be dark purple like that. But I wanted to have some nice detail to the background. So you can either use a, a wave texture. Let's do, now we can distort it a bit, maybe not that much. You can rotate it, yeah, something like that. And uh, we can also use this as the roughness, just like that. And uh, for the lighting, uh, let's add a nice point light in the back. Don't want it to be too bright. Now you can see, uh, I want this to be rotated a bit. Yeah, something like that. Uh, one other thing we could do is change the material of these cubes or these pixels into something like uh, glass. Uh, let me create a new material, call it glass. And uh, we need a way to select those cubes in our materials. So let's do go back to the geometry. And uh, we can set, I think they are these here. Yeah. Yeah, we can use a set material. Now that should be the glass material. Go back to the shader. We can do, we can get a glass material. And that looks perfect, but we can make it better. Let's add some emissive emission to it. So let's make it a bit purplish. So if we do that, that's what we get. Doesn't look very good. Uh, we can use a uh, layer weight to blend between the emission. The layer weight gives us a mask like that. So, so we want parts of the glass to be refractive and parts to be emissive for, for a nice effect. Light in the glass. Yeah, something like that. Let me first reduce the subdivisions, some bigger subdivisions. Another thing we could do is uh, make some or add some wires. So if you research wireframe, you get this pixel wireframe. And a good thing about this is that it works in Eevee as well. So you can see that. And we want a uh, pixel size so that we just see very, very thin lines. Another thing I want to do is bring in the mask we have. Uh, this mask here it would be very useful. So I'm going to use a store, store named attribute and just save this as a mask so that I can use it in my material. So shader editor, I can use attribute called it mask. The, yeah, we have it there. And you can see how they have a nice effect. Now, let me try to explain this a bit better. So we have our gradient mask from geometry nodes. It creates this nice distance gradient, but we also have these wireframes. We want the wireframes to be brighter at the end of the transition here and uh, here to be less. So we are multiplying this mask onto this using this color mix node uh, to fade that here. So you don't see the wires here, but you see them here. And uh, I also have this layer weight because I wanted to add some emissive light into the glass, but I don't want it to be everywhere. Like say, like this, this doesn't look good. We still want the glass effect there. So I use this uh, layer weight mask using the facing mask so that only parts 
of the mesh are reflected depending on how on how they are oriented to the camera so you can see parts of the mesh so we blend that and, or mix them together with this something like that and if we use that to blend the two materials the glass and emission we get something like that and uh, if you want to be even fancier you can use uh, i think it is uh, geometry or uh, there is this random per island effect random per island and you can use that to create a mass uh, a color now unfortunately this node only works in in cycles it doesn't work in ev so that's why i would not use it but yeah you can see it adds some nice extra detail into that but uh, it won't come through in ev add more subdivisions yeah one extra effect you could do is add some compositing for example i use the viewport compositing but uh, it's just adding some glares and uh, fog glow to get those nice uh, reflections but everything else is i think similar if you want to check out the project files all links are going to be in the description thank you for watching see you in the next video